Good day, ladies and gentlemen. You find me <laughs> wandering around in a bunch of woods. I have no idea where I'm going, <laughs> but I know where I want to be, and that is fishing. I've got all my kit. Now, there's no lakes for ages around me, and the Uber driver who's got me here have been driving up and down the road trying to find a little footpath which I can walk up. And thankfully, we found it. As you can tell, I'm about out of breath. It's a bit of a hill. I've done a bit of walking, guys. It's not right. I'm far too out of shape for this. Oh. Anyway, hopefully, somewhere past these trees here, there is a spot of fishing to be had. At least I hope so. Oh. Blue my neck. Anyway, I'm going to keep on trudging through. And as soon as I find a bit of water, I'll join you again when I got my breath back. Well, I have to admit, I've been wandering around for a little bit. <laughs> the problem is, out here in the middle of nowhere, I can, I can smell the lake in the air and I know the fishing is near, but my phone has absolutely no GPS. And with today's modern technology, when that goes down, you have no idea where you are. However, I can, my fishing sensors are going off and I think it's that way. Let's go find out. Now I've stopped running around in the woods like an idiot. <laughs> Here I am. This is Abbott's Pool in North Somerset, just the other side of a river from where I live in Bristol. Now a lot of people have told me I need to get down here and do a little bit of fishing. Um, apparently the tench fishing is mwah, chef's kiss. But it's still pretty chilly out. It's the beginning of March at the moment and it's pretty cold. So, I'm here to try and target some of the supposed pike which are in here. Uh, my pike fishing has just been really, really bad this winter, barely any touching the bank. So I'm hoping here might be a place where I could winkle a few out. It's fairly quiet, but there are some dog walkers and families walking around. It's a public area, it's a free place to fish. So, I'm, actually I'm expecting, I was expecting more anglers to be here, but never mind. <laughs> All the lake to myself, that's fantastic. Um, it, I've had a little wander around, it looked very, very snaggy in the bottom, so I've got to be very careful. But, it's worth a go, isn't it? It's got to be worth a go, and it's absolutely stunning around here. The woodland, it's so secluded. Lovely. Anyway, I'm going to get myself set up, and hopefully put out a dead bait for a lovely big pipe. <laughs>
there we go, finally set up. Now, Abbot's Pool is only a very, very small pool. It is what it is. It's very, very tiny. I've just um, measured the depth and it's about eight foot where I'm deciding to fish, which is literally just in the margins right in front of me. Because I always like to try the margins first, whatever I'm doing. It's no good casting out into nothingness if the fish are likely to be beneath your feet. Um, and when you're casting out into nothingness, you're scaring the fish away from your feet, which you could have caught if you'd have cast it near your feet to begin with. <sighs> anyway, I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but Abbot's Pool is um, one of those really, really ancient pieces of water that in the Middle Ages, the monks from the local abbey first brought carp over to this country to be stocked and eaten by themselves. Now, there is rumour that in here that there are still a few of those original wild carp. Well, obviously not the original ones, it was the Middle Ages, but these would be descendants of those first carp that were ever brought over to Britain from Europe. Chances of me catching one on pike gear is very slim, but you never know. <laughs> but apparently the chances of anyone catching one anyway is also very slim. Wild carp are particularly well known for the chances of catching them being near enough zero. You've got to have a really lucky day. Anyway, there's lots of other fish in here, lots of silverfish. I've seen some topping here and there across the water, which I've made keen uh, note of. So that later on, I can have a wander around and maybe put a dead bait in there. Um, there's also lots of tench in here. It's, it's famed for its tench. Um, and it's pike, of course, which I'm hoping to be able to get today. We shall see. Um, <laughs> the, the water is extremely snaggy. Even sitting here, I could see twigs and roots and things sticking up from the ground and as I say it is eight foot deep so if I can see them here then that's not looking good so I'm fishing just over this way away from them although that's probably where the predators are likely to be holding I don't want to lose a lot of uh, a lot of tackle so I'm going to try and draw them out with the smell of a tasty tasty fish anyway as I say I've set up my rod it's just a carp rod with um you know ordinary reel on actually this is one of my lure fishing reels but it, it's nice and light and it does the job when I'm moving around I've got on my line, my usual pike setup, which is bead, pike float, bead, <laughs> a few shots to drop the bait down, and the trace itself with the treble hooks on the end. And at the very, very top of here, which I cannot reach because it's eight foot up, there's a little stop, uh, little float rubber, little stopper, which I can slide up and down depending on the depth of the water. The idea being that when I chuck the bait out, the float just stays where it is and the bait drops down stops at the float stop perfect anyway that's my usual setup for most times i go fishing even on the rivers to be honest whether that's right or wrong i don't know um but it's always done me pretty well for pike in the past so we will give it a go now have a look at what bait i've got for them now my little bucket which also serves as a seat should there be no seats which there is which i'm sat on i've got some dead roach there's another roach in there i think this might be my little roach bag i've got a few uh, little jerry mackerels which have seen better days to be honest with you <laughs> but no worth a try i've got a little skimmer bream and i think most of these in here are also skimmer breams a few rud in there as well a few hybrids uh what have we got here yeah some more roach uh, let's see what's here oh and a, a random herring <laughs> or a sprat or no it's not a sprat it's probably a herring um i think that's it i think if you these fish can't really be seeing too many sea baits, I don't think. They'll be eating the fish which are in here. Um, perhaps a few frogs and things as well. Um, so I figured, you know, just ordinary freshwater fish might be the way forward. There we go. A nice, delicious frozen roach. And I'm just going to use a little bait drill, which I have here, just to puncture, because it is still frozen, a few holes into the roach. Although it stinks like anything. I do find a bait drill works really well because you can sort of through the frozen fish screw it through and pull it out and get some holes into it i'll do some on the other side as well I'm washing my hands of course the idea of this is to get a bit of the smell out into the water when the fish goes in starts to defrost because it's still frozen as you can see yuck um i should have bought a towel <laughs> which i didn't bring <laughs> Of course I didn't bring one. Nice. This will all go straight down my trousers. If my mum was watching this, she'd be like, don't rub that down your trousers. 
by the way, my mum does not sound like that. It's just the generic sort of Monty Python mum voice. <laughs> um, don't worry down your trousers. I'll have to clean them later. Well, I will have to clean my trousers later. Never mind. Anyway, I'm going to pop this out in the spot I've chosen. Not too far out. And it's a waiting game. Right, just pop the float out. And the brooch which I have on, despite all the holes I've made into it, floats ever so slightly. <laughs> but the weight of the shot is dragging the... Uh, bait slowly slowly down to the bottom of the lake just uh, allowing um, the line to be quite loose until I can see it hit that stop knot which should be near the bottom and hopefully it will come to rest down on the, uh, the leaves of the bottom and um, be in the perfect place for a passing pike now it's a simple game of sitting back, relaxing, and watching the float. There we go. Didn't take too long actually. A gorgeous nine pound, 11 ounce pike. Look at the beautiful markings on that fish. Now this is probably a descendant of one of the pike first introduced here in the middle ages into this pond. What an absolutely glorious fish. Look at the colors and markings of that. Actually came in really, really easy. Didn't put much of a fight at all until it got on the bank. <laughs> I've had a lot of people coming along taking photographs of him. But he's been out much too long now in my liking, only about a minute or so really, <laughs> but it's too long in my book. So I'm gonna pop him back into his home. Well, I'm absolutely pleased as punch with that fish. Honestly, I have to say when I got here I and mean, I've looked at this place on Google Maps and seen it's quite small but when I got here I was like there can't be any really big fish in there not that a nine pound is really big fish for a for a pike of course but it's a big fish for this sort of size of pond I mean it is really small I could walk around this pond in two minutes easily I'd probably cast the other side as well um they're actually being <laughs> just speaking to two gents who have just gone and um, uh, I had to show a picture of that fish too because they were in, in the water over the other side. They were swimming in this freezing cold water. And the water, I know because I'm covered in it from that pike, is absolutely freezing. Oh, that's be absolutely mad. Imagine in the summer, this place has lots of swimmers swimming around in it. And even they were like, well, if we knew that sort of fish was in here, we probably wouldn't have jumped in. But I bet they would have done. Um, hopefully I don't have to go swimming in here. Um, to get to get a fish out because <laughs> I really don't want to have to go in there and get that cold. 
But I've just sent you have a you have a rod out. Well, you have a rod, the same rod. I've only got one rod. Uh, make it nice and easy for travelling purposes. But I've just sent another bait out, I should say, um, back out into the middle, which is near enough where I caught that fish. It did drift a little bit. This one's drifting a little bit. I think some of the frozen roach have a bit of air inside them, which is causing them not to sink properly. Um, but when they defrost, they seem to get back into the right spot. What I should do, really, is perhaps in the net, chuck a few of the uh, frozen roach I've got and just let them defrost before I hook them. But actually, they're a darn sight easier to hook when they're frozen, I find. Have a little twitch on the float. Can't be another fish straight away, surely. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? It's a mystery today as to what I'm going to get. But let's see if I can get another one before my day is over. Ah, but I am happy with that lovely pike. My pike fishing this winter has been very, very poor. I haven't managed to catch many pike at all. Uh, mostly because it's been pouring with rain here in Bristol quite a lot. And the rivers have been high and chocolatey. So this was my idea today to find a still water with some pike in where I wouldn't have to worry about the, 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 the torrents of brown water flowing down the rivers. And it appears to have paid off. Good, good. <laughs> Now, I don't know much about this lake, if I'm honest. I've been told to come here by a couple of people. One who uh, watches this channel, and uh, people from work. But you can still do a little bit of um, reconnaissance on the lake without even having to be here to look at it. For instance, this end of the lake, with a little raft, I'm not going that way. Not at all. Not putting a pike rod out there in the slightest, because I know there are lots of underwater snags there. Now, how do I know this? Well, because I go onto Google Earth and I check out the lake. Now on Google Earth, it's got a photo of this lake taken in the summer, and it's quite clearly visible that this end of the lake here is covered in lily pads, <laughs> absolutely covered in lily pads. Um, so I'm not going to go that way, because <laughs> I know, even though I can't see them, I know they are there. So I don't want to get all my pike stuff tangled up and caught up in all those lilies and end up losing tackle in the bottom of the lake. And indeed, with just a little wander down this end of the lake, you can even start to see some of the lilies starting to come up under the water. So Google Earth didn't lie. <laughs> floor's a bit dodgy. Anyway, I've just snuck round to the opposite side of the lake, to where I was just fishing. Reason being is I saw a big swirl come up on the surface, just sort of underneath those trees there, with it overhanging. Now, it could have been anything, I suppose. Could have been one of those, those carp, could have been a tench even. But it could have been a pike snapping around for roach and things that are swimming around in the water. So I've just snuck round into this little spot, just there, a little swim, and popped out a pike float, baited with a roach, a dead one. Um, I, thought, I fancied a bit of a walk round anyway. I've been sat in that swim for quite a long time, and I cast around quite a lot of different spaces. And um, I thought, well, it's about time I had a bit of a move. And when that fish showed on the surface, I was like, aha, there's my cue. <laughs> Anyway, it'd be interesting to see if it is a pike. 
but I'm keeping fairly quiet because I'm fishing very close in. Yeah, I'm going to hunker down here on the on the leafy ground, put my unhooking mat down so I don't get a wet bottom, and keep an eye on that float. Actually realise I don't need to sit on the ground, do I? I've got a bucket to sit on before I bought it. <laughs> I don't often bring a bucket fishing, I normally bring a nice chair, or if I'm walking up and down, I do just sit on the ground. It's nice to be uh, close to nature, but um, yeah, if I've got a little seat to sit on, fantastic. This pike has to be the one that was jumping out the water catching those roach earlier on. Here he is. Beautiful seven pound fish on the nose. Gorgeous, gorgeous predatory eyes and that jaw with those sharp, sharp teeth in there for snapping down all those little unsuspecting roach. Beautiful colours, the camouflage as always and that powerful, powerful striped tail. Ah, <laughs> lovely. Anyway, give him a quick kiss, mwah, and we'll pop him back in to his lovely watery home. <laughs> Just drifting off underneath the trees there in the margins. Sulking away, <laughs> as pike only do. I think with that commotion, I'm going to move to a different swim. Perhaps have a look a bit further along. Getting a little bit too close to those lily pads. But if not, I'm going to head over onto the, the dam wall and uh, cast off of there and see if there's any pike lurking around there. That's an area actually where people have been feeding the ducks all day. So there's every chance for small fish are moving around there and uh, bringing in the pike to them. Now, this looks like a perfect swim, doesn't it? But I can see, whereas you probably can't, a load of logs <laughs> underwater right about there. And there's a load of logs underwater right about there and it's really shallow and actually doesn't get deep until about there so the area I'll be casting into is this little space between those sticks and this bank hmm to be honest it's a little bit hare and scare I'm not too sure about it but I reckon if I just pop it down this edge here So long as I'm aware of these sticks and snags under the water, I can try and pull the fish to where I need it to go. At least, that's the idea anyway. <laughs> ah, and a nice, nice seat here. Nice, uh, 
nice log, nature's bench. <laughs> well, it is super shallow here. The uh, bait did not take long to hit the bottom. Um, but I'm going to give it a little while in this swim. Actually, since I've got here, I've been looking in the margins and all the leafy undergrowth. Um, there's a load of frogs in the edges breeding. And um, as well as eating fish, um, pike will also eat frogs. So there's every chance they could be coming in and snapping up these frogs whilst they're uh, getting busy in the edges. <laughs> With Abbot's Pool being steeped in medieval history, I mean, I'm not one for, for ghosts. I don't believe they exist at all. But there are plenty of ghost stories down here. I mean, I can quite imagine, especially if you're here night fishing, and there's a bit of fog or mist coming off the water, that your mind will start running away with you. Indeed, Many anglers who have been down here have such tales of long dead spirits of monks gasping across the water. All I've seen today are the bodies of semi naked men jumping in the water doing a bit of swimming behind me. A load of ducks. <laughs> and thankfully, a couple of pike. <laughs> but, who knows? If I stay on here much longer, perhaps I will see some ghostly spirits. I'm going to give it another 10 minutes here, I think. I've recast my rod again for the last time in this swim. I really want to get down by that damn wall. Now there's less people around. I think it'll be a bit better down there. By less people, I mean less people swimming in the water. <laughs> I've got another hour or so left before I'll have to make my way further along somewhere else. Like down the road, catching a taxi, getting back home. But yeah, I really do want to try down that damn wall end. So guys, that's the end of my day. It's getting really cold now. The sun's its last sort of fading light and I really need to get myself on my way back home, especially to get warm again. Had a fantastic day down here at Abbot's Pool catching those pike. It's been quite a long time since I've really had a good pike session and I've only actually been here for about four, four and a half hours. So that's a pretty good, pretty good session in my book. Um, fantastic fish i'll be back down here again to uh, maybe sample a few of those tench which are supposedly in here um maybe even hook up into one of those amazing wild carp now that really would be an extra special treat although impossible i believe <laughs> but we shall see you never know again with angling it's such a mystery you never know what you're going to get and if you don't go out and experience the actual angling process and being out in nature and actually getting out and doing it, you will never know what you're going to catch. Sometimes it's nothing, sometimes it's fantastic, spectacular, beautifully predatory camouflage pike like I've had today. Like this video if you've liked it, subscribe to my channel for more content because there will be more content and I will see you again next time.
Bye.